As the war between Israel and Hamas rages on along the Gaza Strip, there are reports that the terrorist group Hamas had plans to use chemical weapons on the Israeli people. Now, to chat about this in more detail is our foreign affairs expert and host of the Foreign Desk, Lisa Daftari, joins us once again from Los Angeles. Lisa, according to a report by Axios, the Israeli Defense Forces found a USB flash drive containing instructions for crafting a cyanide dispersion device? Right. Doesn't this take this war to another level to imagine that the Hamas terrorists not only wanted to behead, burn alive, take families and shoot them execution style, on a holiday, on a Sabbath, but they also wanted to unleash chemical weapons on a civilian population. An unprovoked terrorist attack on Israeli civilians, which was supposed to be even so much more than it already was. Uh, how these new developments just show the sheer level of hatred, monstrosity that was unleashed onto the Israeli population. And it's horrific to see all of this and see videos of the babies, see the videos of the hostages, and see a world that is so divided, a world that thinks that they have to give their opinion on the political policies. How can this be over land when they are beheading babies, when they are uh, unleashing this kind of of hatred, this kind of brutality on, on, on innocent civilians. I mean, uh, as a journalist, I have been covering many, many wars. I covered ISIS and all of its brutality and all of its beheadings and all of its attacks. And I have never, ever seen anything like this. And to be honest with you, the, the, the more, most upsetting part about all of this is not the difficulty and the emotional distress of covering this, this, this horrific, horrific attack, but really the disappointment in, in humankind to watch the world divided and not being able to call out Hamas point blank, end point, that is it, call out Hamas. This is just horrific. And I do hope that more people watch your newscasts and get the truth and understand the level at which they wanted to carry this out. And let me tell you one other thing, Hal, and you have chemical weapons like this, when you have a desire like this, it's not going to stop with the people of Israel. We know that we have militants in other parts of the world. We know that they will unleash their attacks and their brutality and their hatred on all non-believers. And that includes atheists and Christians and even moderate Muslims. So it, the world better wake up is, is, is really the point of this story. Lisa, the United States is further helping Israel in its battle against Hamas. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said that the Pentagon is sending a terminal high-altitude area defense anti-ballistic missile battery and Patriot missile battalions to the eastern Mediterranean. Right, so more fortifications being sent out to the East Mediterranean. We all also have two carriers that were sent there earlier. Um, the United States hoping that this is a deterrent, hoping that this is a symbolic deterrent and that they do not have to get involved. Also, I will add to this, we have three fronts within Israel, right? We have uh, Hezbollah from the north, we have uh, Hamas in Gaza, we have the West Bank, but also outside of Israel, in the region, you have Syria, Iraq, Yemen, all proxies of Iran's regime that have weapons pointed towards Israel, but also using the opportunity to attack U.S. assets in the region. So the United States is all already involved to a certain point in this proxy war of Iran's regime against the big state in the United States and the small state in Israel. But the United States has distanced itself from the narrative that Iran's regime is even involved hoping that Israel will just carry out its attack towards Hamas and that the United States can just stay behind as more of a supporting uh, actor in this, in this war. We've been flying back a number of Canadians who were trapped by Hamas in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. And, uh, but there's word as well that U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says Hamas had been blocking up to 600 U.S. citizens from leaving Gaza. What's the latest there? Yeah, I heard an interview with one of these women who went out there to visit family and now cannot get out. Uh, look, Hamas will use any human being, whether they're American or Canadian or Palestinian, uh, and especially Israelis, of course, as their victims, as, as the targets of their brutality. Each one playing a role in their narrative, each one helping them to win the PR war, each one of them helping to play a part in their terror uh, reign over this over this region. Uh, the the uh, Americans, the Canadians, the Westerners who are who are stuck there, uh, they have no way out, and they 
they uh, the interview I heard was interesting because the woman said, and we don't have bomb shelters like the Israelis do. And someone commented under this post in social media, it's because Israelis are not throwing rockets at you indiscriminately throughout the year. You don't need bomb shelters uh, in Gaza. So it's really a, a, a not a political point to make. Get these innocent people out of harm's way, whether they're Palestinian, Canadian, or American. They should not be human shields. They should not be a part of this death toll that plays uh, a, a part in the narrative of telling the story of Hamas. Yeah, it's so tragic. We're seeing a lot of the stories of the bloody babies, the children. It's just, it breaks my heart, you know. Lisa, there's a passage in the Bible which says, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Well, according to U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, there appears to be passionate opponents of Israel who have infiltrated the Biden administration. Cruz says these anti-Israel elements are undermining U.S. President Joe Biden's ability to really stand firmly with America's longtime ally, Israel. Yeah, it's it's no secret, Hal, from the first day that the squad, who he's referring to, but mostly spearheaded by Rashida Tlaib of Michigan and Ilhan Omar, uh, who are in office sheerly to, to really bash Israel from day one. They have shown no signs of loving America, of loving their country, of loving their constituency. But every time there's an opportunity to bash Israel and, Israel, and the United States' policy, uh, being allied with Israel, they take the opportunity to do so. And I will add this, they're lying. And that is what is unacceptable. It is unacceptable to not only um, put at risk Israel, uh, the United States' ally Israel, but to lie in doing so. The hospital bombing last week was corrected by most mainstream media outlets who ran with the story incorrectly, right? If you remember how in the first hours, Hamas said that Israel bombed a hospital in Gaza, and everyone ran with it, and they said there were hundreds of casualties. There was no video to support this. There was no reports to support this. But the mainstream media, including the New York Times, the BBC, the Washington Post, all ran with it. Israel said, let us investigate. And sure enough, they knew that that, that was not their policy to hit a hospital, but maybe there was an accident. They showed that an actual Palestinian missile hit the hospital by accident. And it was actually the hospital parking lot. The hospital is still standing. There could not have been that many casualties. So the whole story was fabricated and exaggerated. And these women in the squad refuse to correct the narrative. They have yet to walk back the story. And all they do is push for ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. I have not heard them once say, release the hostages. I have not heard them say, Hamas is a terror organization. It is very dangerous to have these members of Congress, as Ted Cruz eloquently said, um, really, it, it is damaging to the United States policy. It's damaging to the United States as a whole. And they do not belong representing a country that they do not love and support. You know, there's certain people in the mainstream media who refuse to call Hamas a terrorist organization. We do here at Bridge City News, but we're not mainstream media. But now the BBC is actually changing their narrative from militants to actually calling them a terrorist organization after a recent meeting with some of the Jewish leaders. And as well, they're going to be basically reinforcing what the UK government has said all along that, yes, in fact, they are a terrorist group. Now, Lisa, two professors who made anti-Semitic comments related to the Israel-Hamas war apologized, trying to kind of distance themselves from their previous statements. One is a professor in Chicago, Dr. Mike Tosca, who says Israelites should, quote, rot in hell. The other is Professor Richard Rickford, who teaches at Cornell University. He called the Hamas attacks on Israel exhilarating and energizing. Lisa, how do these guys still have jobs? How do they have jobs? How this is a this is a culture at, at the university level, especially at elite universities, to be anti-Israel. These individuals took it a step further to really put in their personal gusto uh, in, in making these remarks. Now only walking it back because there are consequences. This is where cancel culture works both ways. They only thought it worked their way, but now it's working against them. How there are so many examples. We had here in Los Angeles an oncologist, a very renowned oncologist, and he lost his job at many at many of the offices with which he rounded. And it's incredible to see professionals of this level show so much hatred. Would they be get away with it if they showed hatred toward any other group? I mean, it's horrific to think that in the year 2023, whether you're a professor or a doctor, you're a, a, a you know work in in a. There was one girl who worked at Citibank. 
there are calls being made to these offices to get rid of these people for, for there to be consequences for their actions. And it's horrific, again, how to think that they they, they can get away with it and that they can uh, you know, maintain these positions, particularly at the university level. They teach their version of history, which obviously is, is very slanted. But, and, and again, it's very anti-American. I'm sure it's anti-Canadian. It's, it's anti-established. But that's what the university in this day and age and the woke age is, is, is meant to do. But to put that kind of hatred towards any one group, how is that showing tolerance or what they, they pretend to preach? Uh, I'm very glad that there are consequences. I do hope that these universities do not allow these individuals to be uh, in their positions and do not, do not accept their apologies. Uh, it, it's one thing to apologize if you truly mean it, but another to do that just because you want to keep your job. And you know what? Yet another professor at the University of California, Gemma De Cristo, took to social media blasting these, quote, Zionist journalists who spread propaganda misinformation. She says, quote, they can fear their bosses, but they should fear us more. And that was followed by a knife and axe and some blood emojis. You would think some of these professors would be a little smarter than this. Yeah, not only that, Hal, but it's, this is a trans she became a, he became a woman, a trans who said, find the, these journalists, these American journalists, you know where their kids, you can find out where their kids go to school, you can find out where they live. Imagine inciting that kind of violence when you have that position, wow. when you come from what you, what you claim is a minority group, when you want the rest of the world to respect you and your classification as trans. But you say this against, you, you want people to go, what, kill American journalists? I mean, it, it, it is so horrific, and I am so emotional about this because I am a journalist, and I am covering the story to the best of my ability, but I am getting threats, and it is unacceptable. We're just trying to do our jobs. We're the ones who understand the context. We're the ones who understand the history, and you're the ones who can't even place Gaza on a map, but you're inciting violence against those who are doing their jobs. It's just, just so, so horrific. And Hal, you're not mainstream media, but you should be because you're one of the honest journalists who is doing their job with integrity, covering all sorts of foreign policy stories with honesty and integrity. And I do appreciate you and your show. Thank you so much, Lisa. We really appreciate that, our team here. Now, the president of the board of a synagogue in Detroit was found dead inside of her home. A tragic story here, Lisa. Police say 40-year-old Samantha Wall was stabbed to death. Another potential hate crime? You know what, Hal, I've never seen a murder like this so quickly uh, be classified as a, as, a, as, a, as a crime with no motive, so quickly. And because of her position, because of who she is, obviously everyone's first assumption is that it was a hate crime. And she was very much you know, openly uh, working towards bridging, ironically, bridging this gap between Arabs and Jews in the Michigan area, as you know, <clears throat> a very um, ho hostile place in many ways in terms of, of, of the two groups trying to coexist. But doing her job, trying to create that 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 harmony between the two groups and then having this be her fate. Um, obviously, there's a motive. Obviously, there, there has to be some sort of investigation and they started to walk it back. And now hopefully they will. They will be transparent as to what this was, who did this, who the perpetrators were and what the exact motive was, as many people assume. A court in Iran has sentenced two journalists to up to seven years in prison, Lisa, for collaborating with the United States government. Both are women who have been in jail for over a year following the coverage of the death of Masa Amini. Yeah, this just shows the exact uh, leverage that the Iran regime believes that they have. Rather than reforming themselves, rather than coming around and giving women more rights and allowing this Masa Amini movement to have some air and some some space uh, before it, you know they were very scared of, of, of the, the masses coming out onto the streets and this grassroots movement for over a year the Iranian people spearheaded by the women in the aftermath of the death of the 22 year old who wore her hijab improperly um, now two journalists their sole crime was covering that story just doing their job have been sentenced just shows you the brutality and again the world missing the biggest story, the elephant in the room here, that the Iran regime, the same one that sentences female journalists, that kills a girl, beat her to death because she wasn't wearing her hijab properly, is the same one funding Hamas to go in and behead babies and scoop people's eyeballs out and cut babies out of wombs. Same, same head of the octopus, as many people have said. Let's not focus on the tentacles. Let's get to the head of the problem. And that is the same 
uh, regime that is sponsoring all these different terror proxies in the region that are targeting Western uh, assets over there, Canadian, U.S., European. Uh, and, and really, the, the, the mainstream media has lost this narrative. She's our foreign affairs expert and host of The Foreign Desk. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us today from Los Angeles. Thank you, Hal. Thank you so much for your good work.